Well, welcome again to another Friday live session where I take some time out every week to help you prepare for the IELTS exam. And today we're going to be looking at my top 10 tips for the listening section, just to give you an overview of some things that you can find very helpful when it comes to handling the listening section of the IELTS exam. So whether you're watching on YouTube at IELTS Success Summit or in the Facebook group in IELTS Summit Academy, I want to welcome you. Don't hesitate to leave a comment and tell me where you're watching from or if you have any questions as I go through this uh, live session, don't hesitate to ask your questions. So what are my top 10 tips for the listening section. As you know, the listening section takes about 30 minutes. It's usually the first 30 minutes of your uh, IELTS exam on test day, where you have 40 questions. And as you're listening, you need to answer these 40 questions. There's four different sections of 10 questions each. So you'll be listening to four different recordings. And the trick is to understand what you're listening to so that you can uh, answer the questions that are in front of you. So let's get started. And let's start with, uh, with tip number one. And my first, uh, my first tip for the listening section is a very simple one and maybe uh, maybe very obvious, and that's to take time every day to just listen, listen, listen. As much as you can, listen to audio recordings. Now, I know it's a good idea to watch videos and to watch uh, YouTube and to even do some reading in English every day and some writing, but What's really important to improve your listening skills is to just listen. Find a podcast or listen to the, the radio or even just talk to your friends on the phone or online, but without the audio, without the video, sorry. Try to set some time aside um, each day to just listen, audio only. And this is very easy to do. And one of the advantages of this is that you can listen basically while you're doing everything else. If you're uh, driving to, uh, to work uh, in the car, it's easy, easy to listen to an audio book or just listen to an English talk show on the radio. If you're cleaning around the house or cooking, you can put... Uh, you can put your headphones on and listen to something while you're doing your other tasks. So as much as possible, set time aside every day to simply listen. Listen without video. And uh, maybe the next time you contact your friend or your family, instead of a Zoom call or instead of texting, just do an audio call. And this, this is the type of thing that will help you to sharpen your listening skills as you prepare for the IELTS exam. So that's tip number one. Do as much listening, audio only, as possible. My second tip is to uh, be aware of common vocabulary. So... What I mean is not memorizing fancy word lists, not memorizing academic lists, but as you choose the things that you want to listen to in preparation for the IELTS exam and just for enjoyment and improving your English, just listen to things that are common everyday subjects because these are the topics that you'll find on the IELTS exam. The IELTS exam itself is called the academic IELTS exam, but not because the questions are academic, 
your vocabulary has to be academic, but simply because it's referring to the purpose for which you're taking the exam, which is to go to university or to start a career in a new country. But the IELTS exam itself is not overly academic. So don't feel that you just have to focus on listening to academic subjects or trying to pick up academic or special vocabulary. Just listen to those things that you find interesting because these are probably what are going to be the most common topics on the IELTS exam. And I would encourage you to stick to uh, audio books and, and podcasts that are just going to give you this, uh, give you common vocabulary and get you used to understanding common idioms and expressions that are a part of everyday English. And my third tip also has to do with vocabulary. And this isn't really a listening tip, but it's a, a tip that uh, you can add to your listening. And this is to expand your vocabulary. As you're listening, you may hear some new words. So what I would encourage you to do is to keep a notebook. And as you hear new words or become aware of words that they're not totally unfamiliar, but maybe uh, they're new to you and that you don't have them as a part of your everyday vocabulary, write these in a notebook. And then take these words and expand them. Don't think simply of just adding new words all the time. Try to only add two or three at a time. And then expand this vocabulary in a, in a few different ways. One is just uh, looking for synonyms for these words. So find yourself a thesaurus online and find other words that mean the same thing. And, and you might discover that these are words that you're already using. And so these words become even more and more familiar to you. And then in the IELTS exam, when you're you're listening and you hear paraphrases or other ways of saying things, you'll still be able to effectively identify the information that you need to answer your questions. Try putting words in different, uh, in different word forms. For example, if you have the word concentrate, well, concentrate is a verb. And if that was uh, on your word list that you're creating in your notebook, Think of how you could use the, the verb concentrate as, uh, as a noun. And maybe, so then it would be concentration. And then try to use that in a sentence. And this is just expanding your skills to be able to identify when you hear paraphrases or other words that mean the same thing as words that you're you're listening for. So this can be uh, very helpful. Uh, so think of expanding your vocabulary, the vocabulary you're already familiar with, and not thinking about memorizing academic lists or technical words or words that you think in some way might be special for the IELTS exam. This is not going to help you develop your English so that you can approach the IELTS exam confidently and naturally. Just think about expanding the vocabulary that you already are familiar with. And if you want uh, a detailed video on how to, to do this and, and want to listen in more depth for, uh, for how you can do this, check out my YouTube channel you'll find a, 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 a video on how to improve your vocabulary and it goes into a lot more detail. And I'm sure you'll find it very helpful because it will also really improve your writing and your ability to do the reading section and your speaking too. So don't, don't hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll find uh, videos about everything that I'm talking about today, you'll find a video 
that's specifically about that topic, but you'll find much more that will help you for every section of the IELTS exam. Number four, listen for context. And what this means is try to picture and, and recognize that the situation in which the people that you're listening to in the recordings, what's the situation that they're in as they're speaking? And uh, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. One of the most important ways is to uh, read and listen very carefully to the instructions as you begin a new section or a new part in the listening section. Because at the beginning of each set of questions, you're given clear instructions. You have instructions to read, which tell you your task for that set of questions, and that's so important in the IELTS exam. But you'll also hear a description of the context of the, the talk or the conversation that you're going to hear. And this is so important to helping you to understand what you're listening for. So don't ever, don't ever uh, neglect carefully listening to the instructions at the beginning of a set of questions and having because there are different contexts in the list in the parts of the listening section sometimes you'll in one section you just listen to one person speaking in another part of the listening you have a conversation between two people and in another uh, another part of the listening section, you could be listening to a conversation about with three or four people who are working together on a project. But whatever you do, don't neglect that all-important first step for every set of questions. Listen carefully for context and read the instructions, and I'm sure that will help you improve your score in the listening section. Number five is to stay focused. And maybe this seems obvious, but how do you stay focused and what do you focus on in the listening section? Of course, you're going to be focused on what you're listening for. You've already looked at the questions and you know uh, what kind of questions you're going to anticipate and what your what answers you're looking for but what i mean by stay staying focused in the listening section is this in the listening section you're answering questions while you're listening it's on the fly there's no there's no stopping the recording and answering the questions the recording keeps moving so in order to keep up the pace Make sure that you always stay focused on the next question. Once you've answered a question, focus directly on the next one. But here's something that's even more important. If you miss a question, if you can't hear the answer to a question, don't focus on the question that you've missed focus on preparing and listening for the next question. Because if you don't keep focused on the, the questions that are coming, if you worry about or second guess the questions that have already gone by, you will miss even more questions. You might be, you might be worried about having missed one question and you keep thinking and trying to think about the answer for that one and then you end up missing the next one too. The idea in the IELTS listening section is to get as many correct questions as possible out of 40. And there may be a good chance that you're not going to get 40 out of 40. Very few people get, you are, so you are going to miss a question or two, but the key thing is not to focus on what you've missed or worry about what you're not sure of. 
just keep just keep your eyes ahead of you keep moving forward and stay focused on the next question and you'll discover that you'll get more answers correct and get the score you need in the listening section number six is the keyword strategy and this is what you when you're uh approaching the listening section before you listen to the recording you're always given time to look at the questions so what do you do during this time that you're given you use a keyword strategy in other words you mark keywords in the questions by underlining or circling uh, or mark just marking them in some way so that those keywords will help you identify and here are the answers that you're listening for. For example, you'll always want to underline or mark specific names or times or dates, but you'll also want to be looking out for other things. For example, if you're filling in a gap, is it going to be a noun? Is it a verb? Or maybe uh, you'll is it going to be singular or is it going to be plural? And you you identify these types of things by looking at keywords in, uh, in the questions. Adverbs and adjectives are so important because they help you narrow down and focus in on exactly what you're listening for. You may be listening for a certain type of, uh, of, of car or automobile. But are you looking for a specific color? Are you looking for a specific size or a specific age? And, and, and adjectives and, and comparisons, superlatives and adverbs. This is where a little bit of grammar will comes into play with this keyword strategy. And again, I have a really great video on my YouTube channel all about the details of how to use this keyword strategy and you'll find it so helpful not only for the listening section but especially for the reading section so don't again don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel and find uh, videos and playlists that are specifically set up for uh, these different sections and tips for the IELTS exam Number seven is be patient. And this is similar to uh, focusing on the next question. Don't worry if it, take, if it seems to be taking long for, uh, for an answer to come. There's, when you're listening to the recording, you might have two questions that come 30 seconds apart. But then the next question might not come for a minute. And then the following one will come almost immediately. The questions and answers are spaced out at different uh, lengths of time during the recording. But you need to be patient. And by patient, I mean a simple strategy. Wait for the correct answer. Don't write in an answer or mark an answer until you're sure You've heard the correct one. And if you use that keyword strategy and you prepare in the time you're given uh, to look at the questions, you'll know when you hear the correct answer. So be patient and wait for it. Don't panic. Don't think that it's taking too long. Uh, realize that these different gaps of time between questions is quite natural in the listening section and wait for the correct answer. But here's a very important tip when it comes to this. And again, it applies to staying focused and to keep moving forward. Once you hear the correct answer, mark it or write it down immediately. Don't wait for a better answer. Be patient, but once you hear the answer, write it down immediately and don't wait for a better one. Because if you've done everything else correctly, 
chances are that is the, the, the best answer. Write it down immediately and then focus on, on what, you're, what you need to answer the next question. Don't second guess your answers. Don't question yourself. Um, if you've prepared for the ALTS exam and you've practiced the listening section and you know the keyword strategy and how to prepare to listen for the answers, once you hear the correct answer and you're confident that's the correct answer, write it down immediately and move forward and don't ever think about that answer in the past again. And this will help you get the most correct answers that's possible for you in the listening section. So be patient, but when you do hear the correct answer, write it down immediately and keep moving forward. Number eight, and this kind of ties in with what I've just said, at the end of each set of questions, you're given time to check your answers. Don't do it. You're given 30 seconds to check your answers. Rather than check your answers, move forward to the next set of questions and begin preparing and marking your keywords for the next set of questions. You're not, you can't hear the recording a second time. There's no real way that you can possibly check your answers. The only thing that you could check for is spelling or, or something like that. So um, it does not make any sense during the listening section to try and check your answers. Just keep moving forward and focus on the next set of questions. And then the best time to check your answers for the things that it's possible to check them for is when you're transferring your answers from your booklet to the answer sheet. This is where you can check your spelling. This is where if you missed a question, uh, you can, if you, uh, if you have second thoughts, I wouldn't I would never change any of my answers, but if you want to fill in an answer, it's during this 10 minutes that you could fill in an answer in a, in a question you missed. And don't leave any blank. If you really don't know, uh, guess. Uh, you never know. You might be lucky, but don't leave any blank. But transfer your answer carefully. Make sure that you're putting the right answer uh, next to the right question number. And, and spend this 10 minutes carefully transferring your answers and checking your, your spelling. So those are my first nine tips of uh, for the listening section. And the final one that I want to leave you with in this video is do your best so that on test day you feel confident and comfortable. Don't make the mistake of booking your test before you're ready. And this is how you know you're ready. As you've been practicing listening section questions, reading section, or any other part of the IELTS exam, do not book your test until you know that when you sit down on test day to write your exam, you will feel totally confident that you've done all the preparation possible and you feel totally comfortable. And by comfortable, I don't mean not having any stress or, or not being a little worried because we all get a little anxious when we're writing a test. But I mean just having that sense of, of confidence and well-being that you've done the best you can to prepare for the IELTS exam. And that's my mission. My mission is to help you be fully prepared for the IELTS exam so that you can get the score you need not only on the IELTS exam, but then move on to the university of your choice, find the career or your dream job that you've always been thinking of. And I want to help you to do that in any way possible. Don't hesitate to reach out and leave a comment if you have any questions 
or want more information about the OTS exam, I'm always making new videos. If there's a topic that you would really like to see or hear in one of these Friday sessions or in a new, a new video on my YouTube channel, don't hesitate to let me know. And I want to wish you all the best on your journey to wherever you're going and as you prepare for the IELTS exam. Mm -hmm.